Hi there, everybody, and welcome to this week's live landing page reviews. My name is Izzy Palmerin, and uh, this week we're going to be looking at your landing pages. Today we're actually getting back to our to our webinars. We took a week off last week, but uh, getting back into the swing of things. As mentioned, we're going to be looking at your landing pages. We're going to give a couple minutes just so uh, we get some more people showing up into the audience because I know that there's been a, quite a few people that have been signing up. So giving them a couple minutes uh, while we're waiting for them, I'll go ahead and present myself. I am Izzy Palmerin, and uh, actually, let me go ahead and jump over to my little – there we go. So that's me. I'm Izzy Palmerin, digital marketing specialist and an educational guru here at Kickoff Labs. Uh, I personally have helped hundreds of customers get the most out of their Kickoff Labs campaigns and improve their landing page conversion rate. And joining us today for our landing page reviews, as always, is our co-founder, Josh Ledgard. Why don't you go ahead and present yourself, Josh? Yeah, hi, uh, Josh Ledgard, uh, co-founder of Kickoff Labs. Uh, we've, always, we've always offered uh, reviews for people. Um, in fact, we used to just offer... Uh, we should just go and review pages, uh, review pages right when people signed up. And we asked ourselves, you know, how could we make this a more helpful mechanism for people? Because we were giving the same advice, kind of just similar pages over and over. And we thought it'd be way more helpful to do these reviews in a public fashion so that other people could join and get the benefit of seeing the feedback uh, from the other pages. Izzy, if you're sharing slides, I'm not actually seeing them on the, the viewer for the presentation. So maybe you have that turned off because uh, I'm not seeing them. Um, but anyway, yeah, for people that are that are coming to uh, to this presentation, our goal is that it's uh, is that it can be more uh, more interactive. That you can ask questions, uh, post to the uh, post to the questions if you'd like. Uh, we love reviewing pages for people that are in attendance, both as a benefit to uh, to people who are attending, so you get more out of the time, and also it's just like I said, it's more fun to have it be more interactive and be the page for the people that are here. Um, so if you are in attendance and you did submit a page, we probably have more pages to review than we have time. Just let us know that you're here, that you're in attendance, and this is the page you, you submitted so that we can skip ahead and we can do that page uh, in particular for, uh, for the review. Um, what I'll say is that the ground rules for the review, not necessarily ground rules, uh, A, other than being more interactive, is that our goal is that uh, we would like, <laughs> thanks Izzy, uh, We'd like uh, we'd like you to consider that our and, and as a company we want it to be we want you to think about the whole campaign. Um, what we're reviewing today are sort of the most visual aspects of the campaign, the landing page, the thank you page. But there's so much more that goes into every campaign, including the emails, how you're promoting the campaign. That's kind of stuff we're not going to talk about today. We've got a, a wealth of other webinars that talk about all of the things that go around a campaign. Uh, we're just one, this is just one aspect of it. So consider that, you know, we don't necessarily have the context of your full campaign in mind, but we're going to give you that 80% advice as if, you know, we, we think that these are the few changes that will make the biggest impact. Um, I may have covered some of what you intended to cover, Izzy, in that, but if you want to, if you want to go ahead and take it from there. Thanks, Josh. Well, uh, as, as we mentioned, uh, Josh actually is uh, basically just nailed what, what we're trying to get across with these landing page reviews. So having said that, let's go ahead and why don't we j go ahead and jump into the landing page reviews, Josh. Cool. Uh, I'll start out and I'll share my screen. I'm going to review a page made by Sam uh, by uh, Blue Visor. And I know, I th believe they're uh, they're watching uh, the, the webinar. Actually, hey, Josh, um, can we actually yeah. push, push that one till about 20 minutes after the uh, after the one minute mark? Because actually we're actually the the hour because we're because we're waiting for Sam to get online. All right. <laughs> so I will start again. I will start. Let's see. With uh, let's see. Um, one of the pages up here. Let me share my screen so you guys can see it. Can you, uh, can you presenter? That would be good. All right. So you guys should uh, should see my plan. See my screen at the moment. Yes. Uh, let me hide the. Uh, webinar uh, side of things. Um, so the first thing I, I saw is because I was clicking up in the corner, our exit intent uh, pop-up came up. And before I dismiss it, because it won't come back if I dismiss it, I do want to say uh, these pop-ups, when you add them to your page, and this looks like you know some of the default text, you say try it for free, get early access here. Um, 
they need to have a little bit more context. It needs to say, you know, last chance for whatever it is, the service. Because imagine I, I walk away from my browser and I come back and then I see this pop up. Or the other day I was browsing a page, I was on my phone, um, and they had it set to come up after a few after 10 seconds, and the pop up came up, but it didn't have the full context of the the, the page, obviously. But there's still an, enough context you could add here to talk about, hey, this is for big plans, and this is for you know being held accountable, or this is for something. So these pop ups and the text that goes in these pop ups really should be really should be something that uh, that is uh, that that you guys. Um, you guys customize and make uh, part of your brand. Um, so that said, I would definitely make brand the, uh, the the pop up with some text that fits more in line with what you're doing here. So now let's talk. Look at the landing page. Um, there's a the, the picture up here. Uh, you've got a you've got a woman. If you're gonna lay out this page, I would mirror this picture just as a small thing. It looks like she's looking off in this direction. Now it looks like she's got laser beams coming out of her eyes. <laughs> but um, Really, what you want, if you're going to really think about the the layout of a page for a desktop like this, is if you can mirror this picture and have it so that she is looking in this direction. Because as a person, we're drawn to want to know what other people are looking at. It's just a it's just a psychological uh, bit about being being human. Um, and so, if you can make it that she is looking at this copy over here um, and the form, it's going to be a lot better in terms of visually getting people to notice that. Um, otherwise, I mean, I think you did a great job. This, this button stands out, so this is an awesome standout button on the page. The brand is nice, and it stands out without taking up a ton of vertical space on the page, so that was a good job. Um, this question, though, starts to be a little bit, okay, so big plans. It says, who's holding you accountable in 2016? If I've just read the headline now, up until this point, I'm not entirely sure if this is um, if this is somebody who's going to hold me accountable for like my personal fitness goals or for my business goals for you know I, I don't quite get I, I feel like you have a niche of something that you're you're after. Um, in fact, down below I can see it says our consultants go through rigorous screening process and are seasoned entrepreneurs, right? So this. Subheadline. This headline here should probably be a little bit more specific, speaking to who's holding you accountable for your business in 2016. Uh, just something that makes it clear it's not about like your personal your personal goals or your fitness goals or your relationship goals. Right now, this headline could be all of those things. So make this a little bit more specific here. I'll use my S for specific um, in that. And then it says, introducing unlimited 24-7 access to top business consultants and coaches for $250 a month. From big strategy to results will help you achieve your big plans. And again, I think that this text, just a few additional descriptors in here in this, in this text could make it more specific to your target audience. And the, the only thing that makes it specific to the target audience here is the hint that, well, it's top business consultants and, and coaches. So I'm not going to ask them for help on how to train for a marathon, um, but it still doesn't necessarily nail down exactly what it's after. And this is important for the top of the page. Imagine that people just read the headlines, right? So they read this on the top, and then they read unlimited messaging advice, okay? So it's something about messaging, and then they read how it works, which is not specific at all, and then they read customer accolades. All of these headlines can be specific. So going through them, unlimited business advice through messaging. That could be a headline here. Instead of how it works, it could be a headline that says something along the lines of, um, you know, plan your next year by collaborating with experts, right? And then you talk about this plan of attack, the collaboration. And instead of customer accolades, it could be it could be entrepreneur success stories, right? Because that's your target audience, right? And then this last call to action here: don't forget to. I sort of wish it was, you know, kind of. It's, it's only like why you should be here. Like, what's it, why should I just get early access? What's in it for me to get this early access? Um, and there's nothing up here that also explains like below the form or as part of the form. Like, I don't understand. Do I get a discount for early access? Do I get the best consultants? Like, what is it that I get for this for this early access here? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna not go through the the smaller text on the page. I think the biggest thing is just to make these headlines stand out. I'm assuming that. You've kind of taken some care and some time on the, the smaller text on the page. 
I just really want the headlines on a landing page to tell the story if all I was doing was skimming. And today, this page doesn't tell the story if all I was doing was skimming the page. Um, so now let's see what happens when I sign up. So let's look at that part of the, the process. So I've, I've been convinced. I, I did read your, your text, and I got through your headlines. Um, and I go ahead and I sign up. All right. Um, I feel like just a couple, like, small thing visually. Um, this logo, why not make it as big as the one on the other page? It just feels like I went from this big, nice logo to this, like, little tiny one with a huge headline that says, great, you're on the wait list. Um, if I could just make that that visual logo stand up, um, then this head, this this isn't necessarily you know that enticing for me to want to learn more and share. I wish it was a little bit more on point. Like you'll be among the first to get great business advice. Like imagine that you tailor this to the person who just signed up and they're saying, "Man, I cannot wait to get this my personal coach." Right? Talk to them and say you'll be one of the first to get your personal coach to message with, right? And be specific again. Remind people what you're here for, how you're going to help them, and then explain, you're on the wait list right now. We haven't launched. You can tell a little bit more of the story. You've got room um, to tell more of the story in this space instead of just trying to get them right to the share. Um, now, you've got the points. Want early access. And again, want Early, want your coach first? Like, want to get the earliest coaching? Like, be specific here. So again, use that S for being specific. Um, and then the, the referral stuff is fine. Um, you've got the referral links. You've got the friends counting, the, how many you need to get early access. Um, but again, like, this should be get my coach, like getting my coach. Friends referred, number to get my coach. Be specific here in what you're ask, asking them to do. And then I think you'll see the shares go way up for this if you're a little bit more specific in why you're asking them for, for shares in this uh, in, in this space. Um, hopefully, you guys found that found that helpful. Um, Izzy, do you want to uh, take on the next page? Yes, definitely. I'll go ahead and take on the next page. Um, just in case you are watching this webinar live and you did submit a page to us, go ahead and use the questions tab to let us know. So that way, we do get to review your page during this live um, webinar and we don't skip over it. So. Um, Having said that, I'll go ahead and just jump into t4evers.com. Let me share my screen. Okay, so we're looking at t4evers.com. Um, and looking at it, well, I mean, right away at the page, I can tell that it's for, for some kind of like handbag. Uh, I'd love to know if it's for men or women, but nowadays, you know, seeing how there's so many things that are unisex, I guess there's not too much of a problem. But um, looking at the page, sign up to unlock your, your unique link. It's, it's like right away jumping in and telling people like sign up to, to unlock, like it's jumping right away into the actual sharing aspect. But I would love to, to learn just a little bit more about the actual product itself. And uh, looks like there might be some kind of funkiness going on here with the with the coding. Let me go and reload the page to see if that helps. No, yeah, so there, so, so there seems to be, like this looks like as if it's a button. It looks clickable, so I might be able to click it. I'm not going to click it now, but it uh, looks as if there's something odd going on with your actual coding. So this seems as if it was customized. Um, I'm not sure if it was customized by our, by our team or not, but I haven't seen this come through our support. So uh, if you do need some assistance with this page, just go ahead and send us an email support at kickofflabs.com. Uh, in, in these cases, we might need to ch charge us a small customization fee, seeing as how uh, it might have been done by your team. But it's going to really help out the page. It's going to make it look a lot more professional. But let me go and scroll back up. And um, I'm noticing that like there's no leading headline. I guess like the leading headline is invite friends and earn product. But there's nothing that's really describing the actual product itself. I'm, I'm just seeing, you know, share your unique link. Again, it's making a mention to the unique link. And uh, earn accessories and discounts on the 48-hour classic bag. Okay, so that's that's actually something that's really important to be said, that this is like the 48-hour classic bag. Um, I'm just wondering, if you're driving targeted traffic to this page already, like if, if people arriving on this page are very well aware of the actual of, of the actual product of the 48-hour classic bag, if not, I would lead in with, with somewhat just educating them. Yes, an, an, an image product shot is really going to help to educate your audience and to show them what you're offering, but, um, but it 
in this case, I mean, make it feel as if you know, make it feel more more like that actual landing page because this this is already including the referrals and 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 you know some of the referral rewards, what you're getting for the rewards, which could work well. I mean, you're you're, you're letting people know what kind of accessories they could get by sharing with how many friends, um, but but. Our campaigns have have really been built to like to put these elements on the thank you page, on the share page, and that's kind of that, that's going to help your customers and your leads kind of like focus more on on, on the actual like single action. Because right now there's there's many actions on this page, and it's kind of distracting because I'm looking at at there's one form here, there's some kind of weird button here at the bottom which doesn't even click, and it's just empty, looks like a form field. There are referral rewards, and then there's you know, no friends have, have joined, keep checking. This is actually just somewhat distracting. Then there's their social links on the side, Izzy. Those are part of the page, right? Or is that part of these your browser? Are, these are part of the page. I was actually going to get to these. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, there's there's those on the side. There's, there's just way too many call to action. And I, I think what you're getting at, Izzy, is what we say often is think about the the process, the, your funnel, as more like an assembly line where one specific thing has to occur by the person at each step. Like they visit the page. It has to quickly explain to them what, what it's about. And then the next step is you want to convince them to sign up. But you're not talking about sharing. You're not talking about anything else. You're not trying to get their attention with these other social things. It may seem like it's useful to crowd all of these things on the page, uh, but really it's not. you got to think about somebody coming in with no context about your product. Your first job is to give them context about the product and convince them why they should sign up, not to talk to them about sharing, about rewards, about these social things. So. I'm sorry, if I stepped on that point. Is it's just so important? We have to that get is this extremely across correct. to people. Yes, that, I mean that is extremely right, Josh. I mean you need to to really focus on on educating your your actual audience once they land on the page because you're actually doing that. I mean if you scroll in just just a little bit here, there's some really great context. Here it is. Okay, the 48 hour classic. I'd love to see just a little bit more more detailed headlines because we're actually seeing there's like a strong tendency of of keeping headlines really really short. Like expect more the 48 hour classic. Although I would love to see more headlines, you're already describing your your product, and I think this is more important to actually show on the sign-up page. And these elements, the the you know get get people to share these these are really meant for the referral page, and that's and that's really going to help. Yeah, I mean, it really should help drive your your conversion rate. If you do happen to be in the chat, let us know what kind of conversion rate you're getting. Um, you know, if it's anywhere under fifteen percent, twenty percent, this this page really needs to be improved. And there's some really great images. I mean, there's some good stuff out here. Um, I would get rid of this, this like contact form. What do you want people to contact you for? You know, once you already have their, their email address, you can reach out to them personally. So I would I would scratch this as well. Um, let's go ahead. And they can always use the autoresponder to, uh, to, to say, hey, to ask for a reply. So if you want people to reach out to you, when somebody signs up, one a great way to use your autoresponder when somebody signs up is say, "Hey, let us know what you think. We'd love to get your feedback on our page, on our idea, on our product, and like, what do you like about X, Y, or Z?" And, and mm -hmm. just it's it's a great use of that autoresponder. It's a perfect way to to you know to engage with your leads, and and that way you're going to learn more about your your potential audience. You're going to be able to segment and target them more effectively. So yes, very true, Josh. So let's see what happens when we sign up. Let me in. And it looks as if this page might still be in process because I'm clicking on it and nothing is, is happening. So let us know, T Forever's team. Send us an email at support at kickofflabs.com and we'd love to help you get your get your page working and the best conversion rate for your page. So let's go ahead and move on, Josh. I will take back over. And you should be seeing uh, seeing my screen and I'll again hide the uh, go to webinar stuff. Um, so I've got um, page for Adventure Cow slash Story Prime. Um, the, these lead-in questions, I still feel like it's missing. Like you've got a fun, cool brand with the this Adventure Cow logo and maybe some funny, some fun font or text. You've probably got a logo image somewhere. I still wish there's room to put that up here. Like I feel like it's just a hello and an introduction up here to have your brand. Um, and especially when you've got some nice, you know, visual design going on on this page, where if you did it, it's going to add to the ambiance of the page, right? Where you've got this cow in space, right? I mean, the cow is up there having an adventure. I imagine it would be a lot of fun. I imagine the cow floating up there, and then somebody looks at the page and says, "Oh, look, a floating cow in space!" 
what's this about? And then they can read your line that says, what if all it took to write a game was a writer? Um, and I think that's a great, that's a great, that, that's a great introduction. Sometimes these questions are a little bit too not specific. They're not specific enough. In this case, I do think this question works. Um, what if all it took to write a game was was a writer? Um, I think you could maybe tailor it a little bit more to the audience, um, like saying saying saying, uh, uh, don't you wish you could write a game just by writing, or you could you know create a game just by writing. And then it gets into somebody that wants to create a game or, or do a game without having to, to do, you know, to, to get it gets to the point a little bit cra faster. But I think you're onto something with this question in this case. I think it works. Uh, I think it works for you here. Um, I do wish that then this copy is a little bit, you know, large here. It says, or I wish the font was a little bit easier to read and maybe there was a little bit less copy in this section here. Um, if you're interested in writing the world's next big game or just a fun project for your friends to read, like this is the kind of copy you could just cut this out, right? Like if you're interested in writing the next, this is a statement, this, this, state, like, this statement is, is, is something where you picture yourself or the person visiting the paint pictures themselves. Yes, I would love to write a best-selling game. This statement of just a fun project for your friends. Nobody ever finishes a fun project for their friends. Cut that from the, from the copy here and then you can, you'll have more room to make this font bigger. Um, <laughs> And then your call to action here, sign up to be among the first to hear about Story Prime, our new game project. That should probably be closer to the form where you've got this, we can't wait to hear from you. This spot should be where you say sign up. So that, that text should probably be there. Um, and then you, add, you can add the reason above. So if you're interested in writing the world's best-selling game, and then skip to this, or just play fun games that other people write, that can be your top headline with this sign up being right above the form, right next to the sign up button here. Um, and I think you'd have a little bit better page. You'll get a better conversion rate if you take, uh, take some of that advice. Now let me scroll down the page. One thing about these pages where there's so much copy and there's this natural border down here with the rocket taking off on the page is it kind of makes you want to stop reading a little bit. So I didn't actually think there was anything to scroll um, so I think you might be losing people scrolling because of this rocket natural border. Even if the clouds cut off, cut off in, in this space right here, I think, you know, if, if, if the clouds cut off in, in that kind of space there, oops, still drawing, um, then it would make me want to scroll down the page a little bit more. But I, I would have skipped the scrolling otherwise. Um, you do have some more copy here. Uh, here, when you're talking about when the average person thinks of games, they usually don't think of a great story. Um, I think you can shorten this, like a great game neat requires a great story. So you don't have to talk about the average person because nothing about this, you don't want people thinking about average. Like just talk about great story, great games. Like, and then you're being specific about this is a service for writers for games. Like, so you're being a little bit more specific. I wish each of these sections had a headline above it that summarized here in, in three or four words uh, what it was. Um, so this section is about, let's see what it is, market-based story games have exploded. Build a, build a story-based game or make money with a story-based game, something along those lines. Um, writers everywhere should be able to create. Any writer can create a game, like just write a story-based game today. Um, we think you've changed, we're building Story Lab, free use editor, like our tool lets you do this or, you know, Try our editor when we launch. Like build, try our game, our game maker when we launch. Um, I think just some sort of headline that fits in this space below the icon that summarizes the text below. Then that lets you expand this text below a little bit um, to make it all even, so that this text kind of matches on each side. Vis visually, it helps if you think about trying to imagine each of these sections as as a goal to kind of keep it a little bit even. It keeps the page visually looking good. But I do think the headlines will be important to get people to, to that are skimming. So I talked about earlier, people like to skim pages, and blocks of text can often be intimidating. It's useful to have to tell your story, um, but I think you could add the um, the headlines uh, the headlines to kind of tell the story a little bit more. So let's see what happens when I sign up uh, for this. I'm not a writer, but I will pretend to be one today. Oh man, boy, this page is boring. Um, Story Prime, no fun cow logo. Where'd my fun cow go? I got taken away from the fun cow. 
Now the cow has a mailing address. Now it's just it's just boring. Move. You want to I mean, move. Added. <laughs> like it may, you could use. You should be a Kickoff Labs customer, uh, where when somebody enters this in the field and signs up, you could just do a pop-up on this page that says thank you and here's some share links. And by the way, just doing that will get you 35% more leads. Um, like you showed on the, the other people, uh, the other pages we've seen where they've got those sharing links, encouraging people to share about it. Writers know other writers. They participate in writing communities. They want to tell, this is a cool, fun project that people will want to tell their friends about. Why in the world aren't you making it easy for people to tell their friends about? That's it. That's my pitch for Kickoff Labs. You're totally missing out. We can help you. We can integrate it onto this page. You can keep your fun design, and you can use our any form, our any form product to just add that virality to this page. You could take them to a dedicated thank you page that still has a rocket and the cow in the background if you want that we can host. There can still be your same site with just a popover that thanks people for signing up, tells them that they should check their email if you want to do the confirmation rigmarole and process. Um, but that's just, this is just like you took an engaged person, somebody who said, I'm interested, and what you made it is this boring process to finish something where you need to confirm my email address. And it's just, it doesn't tell your story. It doesn't help your brand. The only brand this helps is MailChimp's brand down here. Um, but that's my two cents. Uh, you could use our product, get a higher conversion rate, um, or you could not. Uh, but I would vote for keeping with your fun brand. Do something fun as a contest for writers that sign up that encourages them to sign up other writers uh, for, 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 the, for, for this. Um, and I think you'd really have something here. Um, all right, Izzy, you want to take it on the next page? We'll do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, and do um, Blue Visors. Is, is that okay, Josh? Or are we looking forward to that That's one? That's great. <laughs> all right, so... Looking at Blue Visor, and hopefully Sam is uh, now with us. Actually, Ben and Sam. Yeah, I see him. So cool. So we're looking at BlueVisor.com, and I know that they submitted two pages, but we'll probably only have time to to look at one, or and, and probably just quickly go through the second one. So right away, I actually go ahead and I'm a, I went ahead and left this exit intent open, and I actually do like that they that they went ahead and just changed the 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 default headline. You see a lot of our customers that that leave like the actual default headline where it says, uh, "Don't go," you know, "Sign up before you leave" or something like that. But this is, you know, this is more more targeted, ready to make more money investing. Okay, who doesn't want to make more money? Okay, try out Blue Visor Beta. It's free. Get access now. So that's 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 a really nice nice call to action. Get access now. It's free. Uh, you know, beta letting people know it's very descriptive. I really like the actual call to action. So hopefully that should work well for you. Looking at the rest of the page, um, I like the actual lookout. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the actual layout. It looks very professional. Um, let's go ahead and start reading into your copy. I, I feel as if this logo is just just a touch too big for some reason. Uh, I, I mean, it works well because it's it's spaced like roughly the actual size of it. But just looking at it, it just looks a touch too big in, in my you know in my opinion. See what your portfolio is missing. Make make more money investing. Okay, um, everyone is trying to look around the corner for the next great investment idea. So you're around that corner with Blue Visor. Not only do our tools help you, okay? So the, I, I think that there's quite a bit of text here. Maybe this section can actually be compressed just a little bit. How, you know, in, in, instead of giving people like one, uh, two, three, you know, four, like five sentences to actual read, maybe cut it down compress it to about two or three actual sentences. So it doesn't feel like like such a big block of text here and it doesn't overwhelm people like uh, to, to actually read it um, because you're gonna get a lot of people that are simply are not gonna read those large blocks of, of text. So they'll basically scan the actual headline and they'll say, okay, well this product is, is actually for me or not. So um, actually cutting down some, you know, some of the actual text just makes it more approachable for, for people to actually jump in and start reading. Uh, I really like the image here where you're just showing like a screenshot of what looks like your app. So that's that's actually very helpful. And it lets people know that it's some kind of app that that, that you can access, that you can work with. Um, here we're saying the request free access to, to limited beta. That's that's a pretty good psychological way, you know, of, of adding some kind of... Uh, um, you know, exclusivity to the page, which works well. I don't see any kind of urgency to the page. Um, like if... If if you added some something kind of like request your your free beta uh, t uh, 
by by this date or or limited to the first hundred investors or or to the first thousand investors something like that that would kind of ur- add just a little bit more urgency to, to the page and those kind of psychological um you know triggers really help to increase conversion rate not all the time but it, it can work and obviously any of these changes that we are uh, recommending if you're using kickoff labs you can use our smart a b testing tool and uh, that's actually probably one of the best ways to implement any of these um any of these edits any of these suggestions that we're making to your to your pages because obviously i mean it's it the goal isn't just to blindly make the changes uh, that that we suggest it's obviously making those smart decisions and uh doing doing the work of actually setting up a quick a b test and getting the conversion rates lifted that way and i'm wondering why there's a, a login button here um this you know this is kind of distracting for some reason you're going to get people clicking, you know, just out of curiosity, you're going to get people clicking away from the page. Hopefully it doesn't send people like completely to to a new different page where you can't get back. You know, I mean, it's it's pretty easy to hit the back button, but still, um, if I, you know, I would almost treat this as a as a dedicated landing page unless you're using it as your home page. But but since it is LP, I would use this as a dedicated landing page without the login or uh, or just make the login just just. You know, it, it's pretty hidden, which works well, but maybe just remove it completely just so you're focusing on the single call to action, which is getting people to actually sign up. So jumping into the rest of your copy, uh, like I said, I like your your um, your headlines, sick of financial websites, they'll give you a whole picture. But these blocks, of, but these blocks of text just seem a little bit overwhelming. So either separating this like if. If if this text is actually important to you, I would cut it. You know, just just basically just do a paragraph break so it breaks down here where it's just where it's two paragraphs instead of a, just a single big block uh, paragraph. And uh, the rest of the page looks looks pretty well. Looks really well designed. You have some nice screenshot images. Make more money investing with Blue Visor. Okay, so it's very clear what it is. Request. They've got the headlines over all that detailed copy. Um. Yep, 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 yep. So I mean, they have. Well, I mean, once again, I have like my small issues with this, but like I said, you guys can take care of that. Just just cut down your copy just a little bit, compress it just a little I, I bit. I do think they could they could cut down the copy. The other thing to keep in mind about the page is it I maybe mean, it's hard to tell on the webinar. Mm-hmm. It seems like the font sizes are about 12, uh, 12 pixels or so. Seems about that. Um, I think you could if you cut down the copy, you could nudge up the font size a lot. And I mean, just honestly, your target audience is probably. Uh, is probably a little bit older than the average uh, than the average internet user, and just you know the larger that target audience goes, just the nicer it is for them not to have to reach for any special reading glasses or anything. Just and and a size 14 font is generally considered more average. A size 12 now on a landing page is really for details where it's sort of almost like a you know read these details about the contest entry sort of thing. Like if you chop this copy in half. Up the font size to 14 on the the base the base font size on the page. Um, I think it would read a lot easier on the page and be easier for your target audience to read on this page. Very true, very true. And and actually, Josh has a has an incredibly good point, which is, is something that we don't bring up too often. But but really, you know, building your page for your target audience. And if and if your target audience does happen to be people in 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 a certain age bracket, which is a little bit older, yes, you do. You know, you want to to avoid them pulling out, like Josh said, their reading glasses or or having to use some kind of accessibility tool to to really be able to jump into the actual details of your site. So, um, looking into it, okay, if you're ready to get on top of your investments, be sure to request free access. Everything looks good. Let's see what happens when I sign up on the page. And actually, my plugin got stuck, so I had to reload the page real quick. Okay, so you're ready to see stocks sensibly. This is a really good size font. See, like this actual size itself, it's 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 greatly increased. Lots, you know, it's it's really easy to read. Um, and I see that I've gotten my the email as well, which is from Sam. So thanks, Sam. Um, so I mean, good good overall um, page. How, how any friends, colleagues who could use help with their portfolios. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you're still kind of incentivizing people, $25 account credit. So like I said, all in all, it's a great page. Let me quickly look at your other page. Let's see, which one do you like better, Josh? Because this is the act, the same kind of company page. This one looks somewhat more professional to me, and it's like a little bit easier. Like like I said, there's less text. Uh, 
I, I like that this page, this version of the page is a lot less text. I still think it could use the font size bumped up, and there's space for it, and you'll still have a decent amount of white space on the on the page. Um, and I think you could add a little bit more padding um, above and below. You can add some spaces there, just to add some more padding in that that co the colorful headline area, and that way that way you'll see more of the laptop and the screen above. Um, and I think that page will look uh, will convert a little bit better. Just be my guess. You can obviously run a test against these two pages. Uh, to see which which one does better, but I think if you up the font size on this page and go to the next one, I think you go back to the thank you page really quickly. There was one thing I noticed. Yeah, I think the only thing I would do is none of these headlines tease your rewards. Like you've got that um, that's bold where it says massive rewards there, um, but you're giving people 25 account credit, 50, 200. What's the what's the top line reward there? I can't see it yet. As he scroll down a little bit more. Anyway, uh, my guess is, you know, I see at least $200 of credit. Take whatever that top line credit is on the page and tease that in the headline. So whatever that top line is of your, your referrals credit and say, like, say like want $200 in, in referral credit, get some friends to sign up. So this where it says have any friends or colleagues who could use help. Of course they do. They already, they, everybody who's in one position knows people that are also in a similar position to them. Um, I, I would change that headline where you say have any friends or colleagues to be a more selfish headline for the person reading the page saying, we want to give you $400 in account credit. Like, that's a massive reward. All you have to do is share with some friends and get them to sign up. Um, and that way you'll tease the reward a little bit more and get more people sharing. Yep, $500 account credit, $100 free for life. Use it free for life. That could be teased as well. Although I don't like using the word free because it kind of implies your service is free. I like the account credit. So I'd say you can earn you know, $500 account credit for signing up. Um, rather than using free and kind of devaluing the service, like, oh, I'm just willing to give it away for free. Um, but to say that there's an actual value of $500 account credit would be huge in terms of a headline to get people to sign up. And actually, you know what? S something that I want to mention in, in the email, which I'm not showing here, but let me see if I could quickly pull it up for you guys. Sam uh, Sam is actually the, the creator of this site. He's actually mentioning that it says, P.S., I'm um, Sam... Let me show you guys. Uh, the, the creator of Blue Visor, even though my friends in high school think it's strange that uh, that analyzing companies has become his favorite hobby. So I think that – so he's saying that he built Blue Visor because existing sites didn't have what he was looking for. So actually so, – so that's a really good way. I mean he's, he's, he's solving a problem that, that he found – you know that that he was actually presented with, but if this is not really, you know, we're actually mentioning that. Well, okay, this might be for for older audiences. If it's not for for older audiences, tell them, you know, let let people know on the page. Tell them, you know, uh, this is a young person's investing tool. This is not a tool for for your granddad to be investing. Tell them on the page because because it kind of throws us off. Looking at the page, it looks like an older company. It looks like looks kind of like something that's more established and then and then the, the email right away says ps uh i'm sam i'm in high school <laughs> and and and, and I yeah. think for what i was looking for so just make sure that it's clear just make sure that that that's you know that the context remains uh clear across your entire campaign the, the, then i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna suggest going back doubling back on one of that advice we had before obviously izzy and i miss both misinterpreted your target audience you of the go. page it feels like you built the page for one audience, even though you weren't using the right font size for the audience, it feels like you built the page for one audience. You can go back to the page, Izzy, one of, one of the two versions. Um, but if your audience is more about you, I feel like I would almost say, I hate to tell you to do this, try a version of the page that's more personal like that email you wrote that has maybe a picture of you or you know a picture of, of something you would, you would appreciate seeing on the site and make it more personal. It's okay when you're starting out to have a personal message and a story this website, this page that you have, looks and feels much more like it was optimized for, you know, an audience. Like you're trying to pretend you're something you're not yet. Like a corporation um, almost, right? Like a corporation, like like I'm going to E-Trade or something like that, uh, that that's an established sort of player. I think you can get a lot more out of being fun and, and being not established for your case, uh, for your case here. So, um, and, and talking about start seeing stock, stocks that make sense for you, like, you know, we don't use boring spreadsheets. Be more fun. Use more descriptive adjectives like you did in the in that email that goes out. And I think I think it'll you'll get more people. And even if it doesn't necessarily change your conversion rate, if the conversion rate stays the same, you might be getting the people that convert that are really after your product or the audience that you want. Whereas right now, 
I feel like the people that are going to convert on the page aren't necessarily the people who believe in your vision, who are after what you're after, and you're not going to, aren't after what you're after, and you're not going to necessarily serve them the best, or they're not going to be the best audience for you. Because, you know, if I had a choice between a 50% conversion rate and a 25% conversion rate, but on that 50% conversion rate, most of those people were not my ideal customer, I'll take the 25% of my ideal customer every day. Um, because those people will convert, they'll be my fans, they'll refer their friends, they'll get what I'm after. Um, and so I would take a stab at a page that's a little bit more personal speaking um, than, uh, than what you've got here now that we saw the, the email. And this is why I say it's useful to think about the whole campaign, so I'm glad Izzy checked the email to see what came out because otherwise we'd be missing out on, on understanding what the, what the whole campaign was about and getting that, that context. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about the next page. So let's see, show my screen, hide this. And it's uh, Character. Um, I wish there was, again, um, some logo, some fun font up here, uh, because it's this fun service. I read ahead on the page. I do apologize. I like coming into these not reading <laughs> ahead and seeing like a first impression. But hey, you know, this is this fun service. And um, and I'm, you know, I'll, I'll explain the service, at least as I understand it. Um, but I feel like you're missing a chance to have a fun brand represented above this and just sort of say hello with your fun brand uh, because you just start with this kind of boringish white text that says, get matched to characters who love characters, um, which, is, which is fun. Um, get matched to, or is it get matched to, or should this be get matched with? I'm, I'm not sure which one it should be. I kind of question who it's, who it's for. Um, I do like the characters who love characters. I think that's a great headline. Um, and I think it speaks to the service. So I do in general, I really like this. I just wonder about two versus with. I love the character and the character stuff. I just feel like you're missing, um, you're missing something up here that would be fun, that would be visual for people to look at. They would get people to look at down the page. And this would push everything down a little bit, but there's room. I mean, this could go down, this can go down another inch or so, and people will still see it. It's still very visible and noticeable on the page. Um, another thing is, Obviously, in your in your culture, you know the, the kind of people that you're after. Um, you know, there's this red hair here. Uh, there's you know red. There's this green. Um, this blue, which is I think one of our default button colors here, um, is more of an enterprisey corporate color like blue. You saw it on the financial website, Blue Visor. In fact, they use it in their name, right? Blue Visor is for like boring finance stuff and everything. But you're this fun brand, I really wish that this was this fun color that stood out like a bright lime green, like something that kind of stood from here and pulled out that color in the background image but was brighter and more fun um, to get people to sign up. Um, and it's just a simple color change. We, you can do it in the designer. Um, so now let's talk about um, a little bit more of the detail. So if you've got this headline, this kind of explains, I think it does a great job. You've got this sub-headline here, uh, bond over your shared passions in entertainment with characters just like you or even real-life versions of your favorite fictional characters. Um, I sort of feel like this, this first part, bond over your shared passions, is useful. Um, the rest of it, I'm not sure, is as descriptive. I really wish this was simply a longer version of this that just explained it a little bit more, and I don't feel like it's doing its job here. I can't give you the best copy right off, off the cuff of what they should be. I just feel like this should be a little bit more descriptive um, of the service about what you're providing here because I don't know if it's um, if you're a dating site or if you're a fan site a site for just like fan uh, fans of shows or, or characters it's not quite clear to me which one it is um, here and uh, and this this section should make it clear like by the time I read this text it should be really clear to me whether or not this is like a dating site or a service for me or whether it's just a, a, like a fan community site. And if I can't answer the question um, from looking at this, this paragraph, then, then, then it's, it's not doing its job. That, that paragraph should do its job in that, in that regard. So we've talked about the top of the page here. Let me scroll down a little bit here um, on the page. So this first headline makes me think it's a dating site. It says this first thing is like, if OkCupid and IMDb had a baby, it would be this website. It's okay to paraphrase and use your brand, so it would be character. So you could just say character in here in your quote, even if they're saying website. Um, or if you're really uncomfortable about it, you can put it in parentheses. 
although I wouldn't feel bad about just substituting, it would be character and not saying this website, um, because it's not necessarily this website that you're after, because this website is a sign-up page. It is this service or this brand, so that's why I think it's better just to say um, character in that place up here uh, for the brand. I love you've got recognizable things that people see, like you've got the Huffington Post here, um, and you've got a name. I wish this was just a picture of Sarah, because you say entertainment writer of the Huffington Post, entertainment writer uh, variety. You're using this space, which is supposed to be a picture, um, and tell you that the quote is from a real person as like the brand picture for that location. And I kind of wish it was um, it was a picture of a person. Um, but then this quote seems a little bit at odds with the other quote saying, character aims to put a more user-friendly face on content discovery than what's typically available from popular streaming services. Okay, this is another thing where you've got this conflicting audience, and I'm not sure whether you're about um, fan content discovery, like sort of a, a dig or a um, or, or a, um, a, a a dig or a product hunt sort of uh, thing uh, for for fan uh, for for this world of characters, or if you really are um, like OK Cupid and IMDb, like that was an easy description to read. I don't understand what this description is telling me or how it's adding to the brand unless this is the focus, in which case then this one doesn't make any sense to me. So you've kind of got a little bit of a conflicting story here. I wish the story had, was solidified on one niche, that is, this is what it's about uh, on the page. Um, so having said all that, let's say, um, let's say I did decide what this is for and I realized it is for me and I'm going to sign up for your beta. By the way, I wish below here you're missing some incentive, like is sign up for a beta is not really an incentive. Great, I get to use buggy software. Um, think about the negative aspect of that, and then imagine what is the positive that can come out of this. Like, be the first to meet great characters, or meet characters first, or take the tour first. Like something more fun, or add some incentive text below this area that gives me a reason why I should sign up right now, as opposed to ignoring your website until it's until it's live. So I sign up, and Okay, so you're going with, uh, you're going with you know, thanks for your interest, share your personal LinkedIn with others. It looks like you're just not quite finished. This is our default copy on the page, and I wish this was fun. This was, I wish this was on brand. I wish it gave me a reason to share. I wish it gave me an incentive to share, like you've heard us talk about uh, for, the other, uh, for the other sites here. Um, but it's not. It's, it's a little bit uh, impersonal. Um, and there's just, sadly, there's nothing we can do. We can't no, we can't read minds with our default text. It just has to be default text. But the encouragement is getting you to make that more personalized so it speaks to your audience. And I think you'll get a lot more people sharing the page. So um, hopefully you're not discouraged. I think you got a lot of the basics right. It just needs to really hone in on what that specific, uh, who that specific audience is. Um, I think just a minor nit on the page, it says character landing up here as the title. Um, I think that should be, again, descriptive, like character, like get matched with other characters. Like it's a small thing in the, in the title bar here, but it's something to think about, like what this looks like. You can see Blue Visor, uh, their title was See Stock Sensibly. So they used one of their taglines here, and I think that's a better way to look at the usage for these things. I see now, Izzy, that we are at the, uh, we are at the 10 minute left mark here. We have uh, one more page, some... Josh. If, I one mean, more if... page? All right, go, go to the, do the last page, Izzy. Take the actually, last you're page. on it. Discover Wireless, you're actually, actually the last tab. Oh, okay, the last, last tab here. Awesome. Okay, I was Dave's going to be thrilled. <laughs> All right, so uh, Discover Wireless here. Um, so let's see, Discover Series headsets are coming. Again, I, I just, I mean, this is my pet peeve today. I, I just, I'm missing something that tells me that this is a real brand um, up here because you jump right into the tagline, the Discover Series headsets are coming. Um, and I just wish there was a little bit more here in terms of the brand that makes it fun and, and stuff. Um, unlike the first image, the uh, picture of the person here is staring right over here trying to get me to read this. So that's a good, uh, a good visual on a landing page. Um, I feel like you've got two different font colors here. Where you've got this blue and this orange. Um, I feel like it's just a little bit too much going on the page because then you've got this gray and then the white and then the white and then this orange here. Um, I feel like it's just a little bit too much. I feel like you could simplify. Um, this could be, you've got the white image fade. This could be blue and the rest of it could be easy to read black on top of the white if you're going to talk about like these, these detailed things like this could be black. 
this section could be white. I'll leave W here to be white. Um, and this text here could be just plain, you know, black. I know it sounds like I'm making it more boring, but often when we try and add too many colors and change too many things on page, we're just making it just visually harder to look at and more visually distracting. And there's already a lot that stands out on this page. There's there's this headline that you're going to want to stand out. There's the woman over here that stands out, and then you want this form to stand out. You don't need the text shouting a different color for each text section here. Um, the other thing is, I'm not sure I like the format of this tagline and then three other taglines here. I wish this section here, more for your office, more for less, more to discover, was a little bit more like a paragraph style. So I wish this was like my P symbol for a paragraph where it sort of a couple of sentences described what it was without being boring here uh, because you're sort of like, it's written like a slide and the headline and the logo should cover your basics about what you're about. This can be a sentence or two sentences below this to describe more. It's, off, it's really weird to me to see a tagline, this, this piece up here, be longer than these words. Like this is just three, cent, three words with each one, three or four words with each one. Um, so I would think about making this flow as a paragraph more in this section where you can keep your tagline really simple uh, but make it flow. Um, another thing, I'm never a fan of the incentive be the first to know. It's something, like, I'll be the first to know, but what do I really get for being first? Like, is there limited quantities? Is there a discount for being first? Add some form, and I'll add my I here for incentive. Like, add a little bit more incentive. Um, let's see, be the first to know about the release and get access. Here you go, right here. You're saying it down here in tiny print. Get access to an exclusive offer that could actually be made into part of this sentence. I know it'll make it a little bit longer uh, to read, but you'll have, um, you'll have that, that, um, that incentive exclusive offer. And then you can make this, this button, the text in here should be, you know, try and get our exclusive offer. Just something that ties in more with this. Like, if you're gonna give somebody an exclusive offer, make sure they know about it. This text down here um, with this smaller print is typically something like, you know, hey, don't worry, we're not going to spam you. It's kind of, it looks like fine print on the page, and so it's likely to be skipped over by people signing up on the page. So let me add my name here, uh, and let's see. All right. Oh, there is a brand, Merit Communications. Thanks you for signing. So this is the first time I've seen Merit Communications, right? Um, and it seems like I landed here by mistake. Like I signed up, and I'm not sure that's what I signed up for. Like I have no idea. Um, there's no picture of a headset. In fact, now you're covering this thing um, of a headset, so it doesn't seem like it's tight connected to the other page. Um, they, there's, there's no um, context. Tie this back in, the headsets, like, you know, add this, I'll say H here for headsets, um, are almost here. Instead of saying they're almost here, like be a little bit more descriptive. Then you can go into don't leave your friends behind. Um, and again, this is generic text that was here. I don't mind this color shift because it calls out a color. I wish this was pure white, uh, not a gray. Um, but then I don't mind this dark color because it is easy to read. I just wish that um, instead of invite friends and earn rewards, let's see what rewards are. Invite friends and get 50% off. So I'll say 50. I'm really good at drawing on a trackpad if you haven't noticed. Um, I'll say get 50% off, um, and you can reinforce that in this text below where it says share unique links, and that way it's a little bit more specific about what the person is after because you've got some great rewards. The problem with this page is you've got a lot of copy here. You don't tease the rewards. People might not scroll, and they're going to miss this section, which is useful for people keeping track of what they're doing, but you need to tease this awesome reward up here somewhere on the page to get people to, to get people to share it or to optimize for people to, to share uh, share the page. Hopefully that's helpful. That's the feedback I've got for this uh, for this page. Um, I'm going to go through. We've got a couple minutes left. I'm going to just do some really quick uh, lightning round pages. My favorite part of the uh, the, the show um, and go through some of these other pages really quick. Uh, let's see. So um, let's see. This says heard hot heard the hawk. Let's see. Flatbush and Borough Park is getting an app. I don't know what Flatbush and Borough Park is unless you're sending this page to somebody who knows what that is. Um, I don't know what it is until I read here over 300 Jewish businesses 
sharing deals, news and events. Um, and then it says Busy Bee. There's a, just, just so much brand confusion going on here. And I don't know what it is for. I don't know what the logo is. And then my only incentive is get email updates. Oh, and rewards. Like, how about instead of keep me in the loop, this button was rewards. Um, let me sign up and see what happens really quickly. Okay, so they do have a rewards page going on here. It looks like they're using Kickoff Labs as a combination. Thanks for joining. I just, I still don't know what the service was. I wish I had more context on what the service was. That's my biggest piece of feedback on this page. Um, did Blue Visor, um, Torch Universal. Again, this is another one of these pop-up things that has no, like, I just see this. Imagine I just opened the page, I walked away, add a little bit of context, like, get your heated belt, um, which is what this page is going to be about when you see it. Um, because I just lose that context here when that pop-up comes up, and there's not, I lose the incentive that's here. I just, it feels like it's missing something. Um, this background, I know you've got a hero image here for your product where you're showing the belt. Sadly, without some sort of fade, it just feels really busy because there's these wires, there's this charger, there's this cable, there's the belt itself, and then it's like, ah, words on the page. And it's just it's screaming at me, and I don't know what to look at and focus on. And it just <laughs> the background needs to be faded just a little bit so that the words stand out because the words are the most important part. And if you need to make the background, um, you know, not maybe your hero shot for the product, the hero shot could actually be in line or to the side of the product. Or use a theme where the you know you've got a hero shot on this side, like you saw one of the other pages we had today, and then you've got your text in your sign-up form on this side of the page, um, and I think it would look a lot better because you're clearly trying to do both with one space, and just visually doing both with one space in here doesn't work. Um, and so try and simplify it down to one, one thing. So the world's first universal coat heater. Okay, that is super clear what it is. Um, other than the fact I've never heard of a, of a coat heater in the first place, but um, I'm assuming it just keeps me warm. Uh, and then sign up here and enter the free torch giveaway and get updates to get the torch at a discounted price. Um, great, you've got incentive, um, but why um, and get updates to get, it feels like really complicated, and get updates to get, sign up here to enter the free torch giveaway and get exclusive discounts. So I think you can just chop this and just skip right to exclusive discounts on this page. Um, I don't know if you're going to use the first name. If you are going to use it in the updates, that's great. Um, again, this call to action, though, send me updates. Nobody goes to a page and says, boy, I really wish this retailer sent me updates. But they go to the page, and the reason they'll sign up is to get the discounted price or to enter the giveaway. So this call to action here should be get the discounted price, enter the giveaway. Um, this section feels really squeezed. I wish there was a space above and below it. Um, then you go to this small... Um, the small fading back and forth or the text jumps around on me. It's just it's confusing. It's a lot to look at. Um, I really wish it was a little bit more, the page, I wish the page flowed where it was easy just to read the headlines without jumping left, jumping right. Now they're back in the center all over this image again. This image is great right here. Um, the, the, this image down here because it explains the product in a way, and the text is obviously it's not on top of the product like it is above. The text was designed to be on the side. So this is where I think you just, this headline, the header of the page should really just be split in half. That'd be my biggest feedback here on, on this page. Um, sadly, that is all the time we have for today. It is now um, about one minute to the hour. Uh, I'm getting hungry and you really don't want me to review uh, landing pages. I get hungry because I'm just going to get angry at your pages. Um, so I appreciate everybody for coming today. I appreciate the, the time you guys spent with us. Um, if you uh, haven't been using Kickoff Labs. A lot of you have been using Kickoff Labs, and I, I appreciate it. Tell a friend. If you haven't been using Kickoff Labs, try it out. We make landing pages with social referrals that are easy. So we make it simple to build a viral campaign. Like I said, our focus is on this whole campaign that includes landing pages, unique referral links, automated reward email. So all of these things that go beyond just the visual of the page uh, to make it a better campaign. As you can see, we've got a demo of one of our reward pages here, um, and we've got, you know, so I explained, like, and we'll also give you, you know, some great stacks and analytics. And we, we lead with some customer quotes here. Um, let us know if you've got feedback on our landing pages. I'd love to hear it. It's always great to get a, a, a second bit of feedback. 
send them to uh, send any comments, questions to support at kickofflabs.com. I am Josh at kickofflabs.com. Izzy is Izzy at kickofflabs.com. Uh, let us know what you think. We'll be back in two weeks with some more landing page reviews. So tell your friends for um, that need some landing page reviews to sign up and get their review if you found this helpful. And like I said, if you have any other feedback you want to give us, send it to Josh or Izzy at kickofflabs.com or just simply support at kickofflabs.com. Uh, thanks for thanks for coming, everyone. I appreciate the time. I hope you found it useful. We'd love to hear from you. Um, until next time, I'm Josh, and I'm out. <laughs>